Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Mining Data Analytics Series with Blockware Intelligence. This is episode six, and we're going to be talking about Bitcoin's algorithmic supply schedule and kind of how it leads to number go up technology, the world's best savings technology. Before we get started, uh, this you know, episode is bought, brought to you by Blockware Solutions. Blockware Solutions is a vertically integrated Bitcoin mining company. Uh, they have a turnkey Bitcoin mining solution. So you can actually buy rigs from them, host it with them, and you know, mine with them and earn Bitcoin to your to any wallet that that you want to earn it to. Um, disclosure: I do work do work for them, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic product. And if you want to get started mining Bitcoin, they're a great solution for you. All right, so getting into Bitcoin's supply schedule, here you can see just a quick chart that that basically shows the total amount of Bitcoin over time. Starts around 2009, and for now, it, it goes up into about 2050. Uh, and you can see the inflation rate over time. Obviously, this one is starting at the very beginning of Bitcoin's history. So at the very beginning, you can see the inflation rate was really high, and the total amount of Bitcoin was very low. Over time, uh, that decreases. So let's kind of look at this table. This table uh, is really interesting. It has a bunch of different uh, columns here. First one is the block height. So every roughly 10 minutes, a new block is mined. And the way the supply schedule works is that at specific block intervals, um, less, you know, less Bitcoin are mined. This, this actual table, though, is, is laid out by year. So you can see it starts at year 2009, goes to 2010. So the block is actually kind of a, more of an estimation at what you know, what block will be at at the end of that year. Um, but it does show also like the BTC amount earned per block. So you can see the block subsidy started out at 50. It's went to 25, got cut in half, got cut in half again at the next halving. It went to 12.5, got cut in half again to 6.25 Bitcoin per block. And that's where we're at now in, in 2022. You can see... Um, for 2022, we actually started the year at around 18.7 million Bitcoin. This year, roughly, we're going to add about 328,000. And we're going to end the year over 19 million Bitcoin, which would be really cool. You can see the inflation rate um, for Bitcoin. It's roughly you know, slightly less than 2%. But as you can see, like when it first started out, you know, when no Bitcoin existed, the inflation rate was basically infinite. And over time, that inflation rate annualized is going down. So as you can see at the very bottom of the chart, on the year 2020, 2045, um, there's going to be, it's going to start the year at around 20.958 million Bitcoin. So almost the 21 bit million Bitcoin. For that entire year, we're actually only going to mine roughly 5,000 Bitcoin for the entire year, which would be pretty insane. Um, the inflation rate for that year, just because um, the amount of Bitcoin that currently exists is so high and the amount of new Bitcoin that is being created is so low, the inflation rate will actually be 0.02%, which is pretty mind-blowing. And the world really will not you know, have experienced an asset with that high of a stock-to-flow ratio or that low of an inflation rate ever before. It should be really wild to, to see you know, how the world interacts with, with an asset like that. This, this video is actually uh, coming out in like perfect timing too, because the Fed is actually expected to raise interest rates this, this week. Um, inflation recently came in very hot. It was you know, over 7%. The Fed wants inflation to be 2%, um, but that's very unpredictable as we're kind of watching. Um, Bitcoin is interesting because the supply schedule is algorithmic and predetermined, meaning we can actually look at you know, any specific point in time you know, for example, about we can look at 2016, the inflation rate was 4.17%. So we can actually look back and see very exact numbers on how much new Bitcoin was created. And then we can actually look into the future and see with pretty exact precision how much new Bitcoin will also be created. Very different system compared to the Fed system that we have today. Here is another chart, very similar to the first chart, but zoomed in a little bit. So this chart starts at 2020 and it goes up until about 2050. 
you can see that we're we started like 2020 and around you know 18 million bitcoin now we're very close to approaching 19 million bitcoin but over time you can see the supply schedule will not break the 21 million bitcoin barrier no matter how much mining pressure comes on the network or how much mining power comes on the network we'll never be able to create more and more bitcoin and the way this works is a very you know impressive technology very interesting uh, algorithmic supply schedule and the way it works is with the difficulty adjustment so bitcoin's difficulty is a relative measure of how difficult it is to mine a new block for the blockchain the difficulty adjustment is a, is basically a network difficulty or the network difficulty is adjusted every 2016 blocks and that's adjusted based on the just the time it took to find the previous 2016 blocks and just for for reference 2016 blocks is roughly about 2 weeks and so this adjustment mechanism is basically how the supply schedule that i showed right here it's how the supply schedule stays intact so if more mining power comes on the network and more blocks start coming in really fast the difficulty will go up and it will make it harder to mine new blocks in you know the set amount of time the roughly 10 minutes and then if bit if you know difficulty goes off the network then difficulty can adjust downward or if, if hash rate goes off the network, then difficulty can adjust downward and makes blocks come in faster you know, to, to, to keep up with the supply schedule. And so here is a chart that outlines Bitcoin mining difficulty over time. I highlighted four uh, key points here. You can see they're all near kind of um, crashes in the Bitcoin difficulty. Um, the first one here is the December 2018 minor capitulation. This is when Bitcoin was sitting at roughly 6K um, and then it just bottom fell out to 3K. Lots of miners were forced to turn off their rigs and that was just a minor capitulation. We also have the March 2020 price crash. This is when the price you know, got hit really hard in a very short period of time and some miners just became unprofitable. They simply unplugged their machines. After that, we have the May 2020 halving. This was when the block subsidy was cut in half. So now the amount of revenue uh, or the amount of Bitcoin that miners were earning literally just gets cut in half um, absent of transaction fees. And that also caused you know, a small amount of miners to drop off the network. And then the very last but major downward difficulty adjustments we saw had to do with the 2021 China mining ban. And you can see that difficulty adjusted very significantly. It was almost down about 50%, which is very extreme. But let's go ahead and kind of look at these adjustments on you know, a, different, a different scale. So here you can see these adjustments over time. And, and basically you can see that most adjustments are upward, meaning the difficulty is going to adjust, but it's going to get harder to mine more Bitcoin. And that kind of goes in line with, with this chart because for the most part, Difficulty is increasing. But here you can see the same ones. You can see the 2018 minor capitulation. You can see the March 2020 price crash. You can see the May 2020 halving. You can see one for the China rainy season. And then you can see uh, the China mining ban, which had a lot of, of fairly significant uh, downward difficulty adjustments. But yeah, that is basically the Bitcoin supply schedule. It's how Bitcoin maintains this very nice, elegant curve. It's how it maintains its very low, forever decreasing inflation rate. And it's a fascinating technology. And, and it kind of is, is part of the reason why people are, are converging on a Bitcoin, because it's the only asset in the world where no matter how much effort or how much energy is exerted to creating more Bitcoin, there can only be 21 million. So thanks guys.